Uh, good morning. Uh, we are at the historical city of Antwerp uh, for the uh, Horace's Global India Business Meet for 2012. And I have with me Dr. Frank Richter, Chairman, Founder of Horace's, Lord Billy Moria from the United the UK, and General Sudhir Sharma from India. And uh, I thought I'll just take a, a moment to ask uh, the underlying reason that we are so India-centric at this point, whether it is from a perspective of Horasis or perspective of business. So first, uh, the question to you, Dr. Frank Richter. Uh, you do this, Horasis, this is the fourth Global India Business Meet, and what were the reasons you thought and why it's becoming so engaging with India, apart from your other business meets that you do? So if you could just share your thoughts on that. Sure. You know, we are very uh, uh, India bullish, I have to say. I very much believe um, in India's potential. And also very much believe that Indian companies now start to engage globally, buying companies uh, in the UK, in Europe, uh, around the world. So we sought to create a, a platform for Indian entrepreneurs to meet their global counterparts on an annual basis. And I think the meeting is quite successful in providing a, a platform to, to do that, uh, to engage in dialogue and of course making also business connections. Certainly. We hear about the downturn, the downturn in Europe, mm -hmm. the downturn in India. And um, I think uh, one way uh, to advance is to, let's say, point fingers and just say what is going wrong. But you should also say what is going in the right direction and uh, on the less good part uh, to try to improve and maybe give also recommendations to the government. Uh, and we talked about this, um, Karan, this morning, what it means uh, to do business in India uh, in terms of logistics, for example, there are a lot of um, uh, areas to improve, uh, infrastructure, and so on. But uh, I think um, looking ahead um, uh, is now to invite uh, the global business community to invest more in India, not to invest less, but to invest more in India. And of course, to create the right business environment for investments. Many investors are frightened to do business in India right now because uh, it's all about uh, enforcement. The rule of law is there. India is uh, the largest democracy in the world. But uh, when it comes to daily, daily, daily business, there are still a lot of um, issues um, to deal with uh, bureaucracy, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think with this meeting, we can put a, a positive spin in our uh, deliberations to invite um, the global business community to invest in India and to engage with India. Thank you, uh, Frank. Just one very quick question. I think you mentioned something about this whole deliberation about various aspects of business. Uh, do you plan that at the end of the meet that you'll have some sort of a policy paper or you know executive summary of what was discussed to be submitted to you know various governments or something of that sort including India we, we do so actually you know the, the night um, actually tonight I will start uh, to write um, so you have, the paper you're gonna have a long night a long night uh, <laughs> and um, uh, it's usually what we do is to um, to grasp um, uh, the main ideas recommendations maybe we can even call it the antwerp um, uh, exactly, the answer of, um, you know, announcement um, and uh, to see, you know, what, what is uh, the next step and, uh, uh, of course, uh, giving it to Minister Sharma. Minister Sharma now is attending already the third time. He um, attended and supported uh, the meeting from the beginning, showing the very close partnership between business uh, and government and we will um, uh, offer our recommendations to him and, and the whole administration. Very good. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Frank. Uh, Lord Karim Moria. Uh, I've been very intrigued by one thing that you've done, which I think has been a very, very big innovation thing for India, and that is that you probably would be the first enterprise that has chosen at such large scale to engage with the state of Bihar. So people talk of India, you know, going and in a whole lot of stuff, but you picked a state which historically is not on the right side in terms of perception and you went to that state. So can you share some of your thoughts as to the reasons and if that is the way forward for many states to do something and engage with investors and enterprises? Yes. Firstly, I'd like to say that uh, I would genuinely like to thank Frank um, and Horasis for what they're doing. Uh, I, this is my second Horasis conference on India. I was in Naples last year as well. And it is a unique gathering because what we have here is in a different city in Europe each year, each year. Uh, a different country in Europe each year uh, bringing India to the fore and it's wonderful because we are engaging with a particular country so in this case we're in Antwerp which of course has a huge connection with India with the diamond industry 
and Belgium. And Belgium, of course, enormous connections uh, with India as well. I mean, for my company, Cobra Beer, we manufacture two of our products and have been doing so in Belgium for many years. Because in my view, the Belgians are the best brewers in the world. Frank, no disrespect, the Germans are very good brewers, <laughs> and, and the Brits are very good brewers, but the Belgians are the best. Okay. And we uh, brew King Cobra, our double fermented um, beer in a champagne bottle here at Rodenbach in Belgium. And we brew our non-alcoholic Cobra beer, Cobra Zero, which is one of the top two in the supermarkets in the UK with palm breweries here in Belgium. So we're proud manufacturers in Belgium. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here. And of course, this also highlights the huge opportunities between the country, the host country, and India. So Belgium, Antwerp, many people would not have realized before coming to this conference, is the second largest port in Europe. Uh, and, and that is an eye-opener. Mm -hmm. So I think that's wonderful, that what you're doing in bringing a particular European country together with India, but also enabling the who's who of Indian industry to come outside India at a conference like this and quite openly and frankly talking about India's opportunities and challenges. And it's wonderful to have government in India at the highest level represented. And Minister Anand Sharma, who I've known for many years, the Commerce and Industry Minister, is here. N.K. Singh, a member of the Upper House in India, the Rajya Sabha, is here. Some of our top industrialists in India, from Sunil Munjal, who I just shared the panel with, uh, to K.P. Singh of DLF, uh, um, they're all here. And so you have this ability to engage with India and have the views of India put forward in a unique manner. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're enabling. And to answer your question, what is highlighted today is that a year ago in Naples, I signed a deal with Molson Co as a joint venture for India. Mm -hmm. And a year later, here we are, having bought a brewery in Bihar, doubled its capacity, upgraded it to international standards with the most modern brewery laboratory in India, all in the space of one year, in the most regulated, difficult market you can imagine in India. I, and that's and the reason I asked that question. It, that, you know. And Bihar is a state that six or seven years ago genuinely was the worst performing state in India. It was the basket case of India. Absolutely. Today it is the basket of opportunity because of leadership and governance. Nitish Kumar, the chief minister, who is probably the most respected chief minister in India today. At this point, yes. And with his deputy chief minister, Shushi Modi, they have jointly turned the state around. Crime has gone down six times in six years. It is now, you don't need kidnap insurance anymore. Absolutely. You feel safe in Bihar. And we're the first multinational to go there, and hopefully we've paid the way for many more to come. And it shows there an extreme example of India, where the perceptions are unfortunately to this day, people are not doing business with India as much as they should, particularly the small companies. There are so many flights. Okay. Belgium is a hub for jet airways going to India. Mm -hmm. The United okay. Kingdom, we have 119 direct flights per mm -hmm. week. To India. Between the UK and India, and yet businesses are not taking the, making the most of this. We may be in double depression in the UK and in many parts of Europe in recession. The Eurozone crisis is not going away. It probably is only going to get worse. There's an opportunity in India with all its challenges that's a long-term opportunity. And the lesson that is coming out of the conference already is a big challenge in India is governance. Everything is there wonderful uh, demographic, uh, demographic opportunities in terms of young population, great consumer market that's growing, enormous growth rates, even at the growth rates we have now, they touched just over 5%, which is alarmist from an India point of view, but from a double dip recession point of view, it's wonderful. So I am very optimistic about India in the future, and I think we've reached a, a one of the troughs in an upward trajectory but it's a trough in an upward trajectory. That's it's great. not a trough below zero. <laughs> That's great, and thank you for sharing this, and I'm sure that a lot of other businesses would take example from what you did and step forward, and you know, Horasis has been a force to you know, bring together all of this. And that leads me to the question to General Sharma. You have a unique position coming from the Indian Army, involved with security, involved with clean tech technology. This is your second or third Horasis meet. My first question is, uh, what do you think about this, uh, these meets of this sort? And do you have any perception on what changes could be done on the other side, from the Indian side, to engage a little bit more positively and accelerate this growth? Well, thank you. First of all, uh, once again, thanks to Frank. It's brilliant to be at the Grass's uh, meetings every year. I was there in Zurich. I was there in Nassim Kaima. The first introduction to it was in Nassim Kaima. And I was so energized and so enthused by what I saw and what the people have met the networking that took place there and people that we met there. Uh, it was a, certainly an open window for me, being the armed forces, I not met the kind of people. And that really made me feel that a lot could be done for it, and therefore I started coming more. And 
Black is very kind to invite me to the meetings. It's a wonderful opportunity to share views and put across it in the correct perspective. And coming to the second part of your question, my feeling is that while a lot has been said about governance and not mentioned to it and even Manjal to it, India, in my feeling, is a democracy which is still evolving. Mm -hmm. And therefore, to get the consensus, to get the right governance going, I must be a tremendous challenge. So I'm just feeling that Prophet Mr. Enka Singh and having known the Prime Minister himself, they're very well uh, thought out people, they, they know what to do. But very difficult sometimes to take across the kind of system is going on in India. So therefore, in the long term, as you put across, I have a lot of hope for India going through it. But this kind of period where the political parties play a role in creating some kind of environment where this growth becomes slightly slower, but it's better to take India along with it slightly slower then to take it too fast and leave some people behind in terms of growth and we have turbulence in the country. So I think we are on the right path and I think we'll go better and better as we go forward, provided we keep on following the path that we're doing. And these kind of meetings really sometimes chart a course and does a course correction and get the great perspective right. And to that extent, Frank, brilliant place to do that. I really enjoy it. Thank you, General Sharma. And I think, uh, thank you for giving us the time. It's, it's been a good platform to talk about India. And I know we're going to have a long day. You have a long day to write that policy paper, Frank, uh, <laughs> for the government of Can India. Can I make one very quick sure. point? Just following on from the general, I think that the Harassus event is a perfect opportunity in June 2012 when the world is at a very crucial point. Absolutely. Uh, they keep talking about the clock being five minutes to midnight or one minute to midnight where the Eurozone is concerned. Well, where India is concerned, the clock is way ahead in terms of opportunity. And I think if we can send a positive message out from here, where in India, at the moment, sadly, all we're hearing is negative messages and policy paralysis, and it's a downward spiral in terms of message. Mm. If we can get a message from here to India, yes, we acknowledge the challenges. Mm. Yes, we know that good governance is needed and that the political area needs to be freed up. And we hope that after the presidential elections, yeah. the reforms will go forward. The retail investment will open up. Foreign universities bill will go through. All these things can move forward. And we are optimistic over here. And Europe and Britain ready to invest. I think it's the right signal in optimism and uh, of course we talked about entrepreneurship before. Entrepreneurs are the core of this movement. So thanks for this comment, Karen, and uh, we need more of this optimism uh, in our global uh, entrepreneurial setup. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Thank you Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you.